Hello, everyone. It's me again. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on the different modes of radio wave propagation. For this video, I'm going to do a HF high frequency radio communication. Earlier on, I have done a sky wave propagation. What is the difference between sky wave and this high frequency radio communication? For sky wave, typically you can imagine that the frequency more or less is fixed. But for high frequency radio communication, you actually vary your frequency in the high frequency spectrum in order to establish the communication. For example, in this video, I'm going to discuss what is the highest usable frequency, the lowest usable frequency, and also the optimum working frequency. Okay, so these are all the objectives for this video. This will be the part four series discussion on the different modes of radio wave propagation. The earlier on series discussion, I have put the video link under the description. So please take a look on those video if you're keen to know more about radio wave propagation, like sky wave and also surface wave propagation. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, thank you so much, guys. For long distance communication using SkyWave, it will appear that low frequency is the most suitable as they reflect best. Okay, under the SkyWave discussion earlier on, okay, I have mentioned that the lower the frequency, the more possibility that they will be actually reflect back the original radio signal back to the Earth. And hence, in this situation, you can see that when we actually utilize a low frequency, okay, it is actually much more suitable as they have the best chance to reflect back all the way to the Earth. However, when we utilize low frequency, there are several disadvantages. Okay, when the frequency are low, okay, we know that we require a very large size of antenna okay, because this C equals to F lambda. When F is small, okay, I actually need to have a big lambda. Okay, which means that the antenna size will be increased. And because of the size of the antenna, okay, it also becomes bulky and also heavier. And this becomes an issue, especially for aircraft. The low frequency also suffer most from atmospheric antenation and noise static, which means that the lower the frequency, the more subjective they actually affect on atmospheric antenation and also the noise static. Therefore, high frequency, okay, they actually offer changes of utilized frequency. They actually offer predictable sky wave propagation with less antenation and lower static noise. Okay, which means that they actually vary the frequency okay, to the optimum case so that you can actually have a lesser antenation and also lower static noise. The HF frequency used in avionics range from 2 to 22 megahertz. Okay, the choice of frequency for the range and condition can be quite important as antenation and static noise must be minimized. Okay, we minimize by keeping the frequency as high as possible and we also need to worry about the receiver. Okay, they also must be kept out of the skip zone. Okay, we must ensure that okay, the receiver are not in the skip zone. So this is the key purpose. Okay, over here, you can see that for high frequency, okay, I can actually adjust my frequency in this range. So therefore, when I actually can adjust the frequency, the choice to use can okay, become crucial. Okay, because firstly, I want to have as little antenation and static noise as possible by having high frequency. But when I actually have, I have a high frequency, okay, there is a possibility that the receiver, okay, they must be able to keep out of the skip zone. Okay, so what is skip zone? Let's take a look on this diagram here. So this is the skip zone. Remember I told you that this is basically the sky wave. Okay, when we actually utilize higher frequency, okay, they actually propagate further away. And when it's actually propagate further away, okay, so I must be very concerned that they actually will not have a larger skip zone. 
Okay, so remember this, when I actually has a higher frequency, they actually propagate further away and therefore my skip zone actually also increase. So we, I must be very sure that the receiver is not inside the skip zone. So this is the meaning. Selection of a suitable operating frequency is very important to maintain a reliable HF communication. For successful communication between any two specific location at any given time of the day, okay, there is a maximum usable frequency, lowest usable frequency, and also optimum working frequency. Okay, so these are the three frequencies that we will discuss in this video. Let's start by discuss the maximum usable frequency. Let's come to the definition first. Okay, the maximum usable frequency is the highest frequency that would permit the acceptable performance of a radio wave propagate via the atmospheric between the two given terminal at a given time under specific operating condition. Okay, which means that this is the highest frequency. Okay, they will be permit acceptable performance when the radio wave propagate via the atmospheric. Okay, so this is the definition. The use of an established maximum usable frequency does not guarantee success communication between a transmitter and a receiver as the constant changing condition in the atmosphere will result in slight variation in the skip distance. Okay, as I mentioned, okay, the condition okay, on the atmosphere is always changing. And hence, because of this, when we actually use this maximum usable frequency, we cannot always guarantee successful condition because the skip distance or skip zone actually vary. And hence, because of this, okay, we need to be very careful when we actually use this maximum usable frequency. It is a good idea to use a frequency that is closer to the MUF to reduce antenation as lower frequency may be more prone to absorption and also static noise. Okay, which means that we want to use the frequency as close to MUF because when we actually have a high frequency, okay, we are less prone to absorption and also lesser static noise. So therefore, we want to use the frequency as high as possible, as close to the MUF as possible. Wave at frequency above the MUF are not normally reflects so slowly that they return to Earth beyond the desired location or penetrate through the atmospherics and are lost. Okay, so this is what it means. When I actually use a higher frequency, okay, they actually take a longer time okay, to reflect back from the atmospheric back all the way to the Earth. So this is what it means. And when I further increase my frequency, there will be a chance that the electromagnetic wave penetrate through the atmospherics and basically this signal are lost so this is the meaning the relationship between muf critical frequency and angle of incident is given over here okay so this is the equation okay how to compute the muf frequency okay you need to have the critical frequency which i have described earlier on on the sky propagation and i also need to know the angle of incident wave okay so this is the parameters to calculate what is my MUF. Next, let's move to the lowest usable frequency. The lowest usable high frequency, okay, which means that the lowest possible frequency on the HF band okay, in radio transmission is a frequency in a HF band at which the receiver field intensity is sufficient to provide the required signal-to-noise ratio for a specific time period. However, atmospheric antenation and static noise will increase with low frequency to the point where the signal is inaudible. Okay, which means that okay, if I use as slow as possible, okay, basically when I actually use as slow as possible, my skip zone actually will be reducing. Hence, this will be desired. But when I actually use a low frequency, okay, my atmospheric antenation and static noise will increase. And hence, even to that particular point, even when I receive the signal, I probably cannot hear the signal. So this is what it means. So this lowest usable high frequency, okay, which means that they actually provide an acceptable signal to noise ratio so that the receiver can recognize this as a signal. 
So this is a definition of lowest usable high frequency, or maybe let's just mention lowest usable frequency in a HF spectrum. A wave whose frequency is below the established LUF is reflected back to Earth at a shorter distance than desired and will not be picked up by the receiver. Okay, so this case here, okay, uh, let's take a look on the next slide here okay, to understand this. So when I actually reduce my frequency, okay, they actually has a lesser so-called skip distance, okay, indirectly also lesser skip zone. Okay, because of this, they, technically they may not be able to reach the receiver when I actually utilize a low frequency. Also, as the frequency of a radio wave is lower, absorption of the radio wave increase, which I also just mentioned. Okay, a wave whose frequency is too low is absorbed to such an extent that it, it is too weak for reception. Okay, even it reach the receiver. Okay, so this is what I had mentioned. Okay, when I actually use as low frequency as possible, okay, I actually have a very minimum skip zone, for example. This is ideal because I can cover a longer path. Okay, but if the aircraft is higher, so-called longer distance, then I will not be able to contact the aircraft. But for this case here, okay, I can actually reduce the skip distance or skip zone by having a low frequency. But when the frequency is so low, okay, the absorption, atmospheric absorption is so big and also the static noise, okay, even if I receive the signal, okay, I will not be able to understand this as a signal. Next, this is what we want to achieve, which is the optimal working frequency. Okay, neither the MUF nor the LUF is a practical operating frequency. As I told you, you can just imagine this is the maximum frequency, this is the lowest frequency. In fact, okay, when we actually operate at this either one of the frequency, this is in fact not a practical solution. Okay, while radio wave at the LUF can be reflected back to the Earth at the desired location, the signal to noise ratio is still much lower than at the higher frequency they okay, compare because we are going to have a lot of loss in the atmospherics and also static noise, which we have discussed many, many times. Operating near the MUF can result in the frequency signal dropout when atmospheric variation alter the length of the transmission path, okay, which means that because of the changing of the atmospherics and because of this change, okay, we may basically change the path Okay, which means that we basically cannot reach the receiver. Okay, so therefore, although we want to work as close as possible to MUF, but we want to avoid this situation because when we actually use as high frequency as possible, okay, we may not be able to reach up the aircraft, for example, because the skip zone actually increase. Okay, the most practical operating frequency is one that can avoid the problem of absorption, but not so high as to result in the Rapid effect changes in the atmospheric. The frequency that meet the above criteria is known as the optimum working frequency, which is governed by this equation. Okay, which means that I cannot use the frequency of the maximum usable frequency. Hence, this optimum working frequency is equal to 0 0.85 multiplied by the maximum usable frequency. And this frequency which become an optimum frequency to use for this case here. In summary, the following factor will affect the range and hence the quality of HF transmission. Okay, I think this is very quite obvious. The transmission power, okay, if we increase the transmission power, the better chances that I can ensure that the receiver will receive the signal because of higher signal to noise ratio. And also typically the range can also increase. I have discussed on this frequency the highest usable frequency and the lowest usable frequency. And last but not least, okay, we talk about the optimum working frequency, which is the best effect. We also talk about the time of the day, as mentioned, during the different time of the day, the condition on the atmosphere actually changes and also the disturbance in the atmosphere. The okay, HF signal are usually single side band with suppressed carrier to reduce the bandwidth and keep the required transmission power low. Okay, so in order to reduce the transmission power, we actually prefer to use this single side band with suppressed carrier. Okay, which means that 
Firstly, we also reduce the bandwidth. Secondly, we also reduce the transmission power. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. See you guys.